it's Andy and today I'm bringing you an unhaul. This unhaul is massively inspired by Becca Fowl who has just recently done an unhaul and also these books have been sitting waiting to be unhauled and I kind of just need to get around to it, get them out of my library, get them out of my house and get them to someone who will appreciate them. Please ignore how I look. Um, I have a bandage on because I recently had, or today, earlier today, I had a minor surgery to remove my implant and I have to keep this on for 24 hours and I am really, really warm because my implant came out and I got an injection and my hormones are all over the place. So you're just gonna have to bear with me because the video, the day you're seeing this is tomorrow for me. So a video had to get filmed because I was very unorganized this week. All of these books are still currently with me. I don't have any plans to take them anywhere for a while because I really can't be bothered going down to the library to donate them. And I do think some of them are on my vintage, but I'm really unsure which ones. I might update it afterwards. So if you want any of these, uh, just, you know, let me know, message me, comment, whatever, um, and I'll send them to you for just the postage. That's not a problem, but I just want them out of my hair. There are two categories in this. So I've got books that I tried a chapter and unhauled, and I've got books that I've read and I have unhauled. So slightly different and I will go through them in that way. I'll start off with all of the try chapter ones and the first is Trick of the Dark by Val McDermott. I have been telling myself for I don't know how many years that I'm going to read this book and realistically I am not going to read this book. It is a detective crime novel and I do not read detective crime novels. I don't know why I keep buying them. I don't read them. This one, to be fair, I bought because Val McDermott comes from a town that is not very far away from where I grew up. It's like 15 minutes away from where I grew up. So I feel like I need to support Val McDermott. But I bought this book. I bought her two non-fictions that I really, really enjoyed. And I wish her the best in her writing, but this is not my genre. And so I don't know why I'm just volumizing my TBR with it. Next is A Car of the Mark by Veronica Roth. I I really, really wanted to like Veronica Roth books. I do. I really, really want to. I love Divergent. I do. I'm one of the few that adores Divergent. I, I'm not, not so keen on the ending of the last one, but I got over it. Like, I'm fine. It's fine because the final chapter with the switched perspective, I really liked. So I can kind of, I'm fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't get into this. I just couldn't do it. I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the setting that she set up. I just don't, I can't, I can't get into it. I don't know what it is. It's maybe because it's sci-fi and I'm only now just dipping my toe into proper sci-fi. Like one of my favorite books of all time is The Martian, but that's more science fact than science fiction. And Becky Chambers, it's more of a character study than sci-fi it just so happens to be like sci-fi so um i'm sorry i'll stop playing my hair in a minute i swear but yeah so i just couldn't get into this i'm i it's the same thing with fantasy and sci-fi with me all the different names for things new settings that aren't in our world i just really really struggle with it so it's just not happening next up again is one i really wanted to like and that is uh those who are loved by victoria hislop this one I got again a while ago and it's set in Greece on the end or on the occupation of Greece by the Nazis and there's another Victoria Hislop in here that I DNF'd and I just don't don't gel with the writing. I just don't gel with, with the writing and I did. I tried this one and again I just could not get into it. Can't get into a writing style. I don't know what it is about a writing style. It's just not for me. Next up is A History of Scotland by Neil Oliver. Um, this is a non-fiction book about Scotland's history. This is a fairly old one and some of the pictures in here are lovely but it's very much just another 
book that lists dates and places and people and it's not really it's just I'm just I'm just not drawn to it at all in fact um Neil Oliver is well known for being quite opposite to me and his views and I don't really want to then I just don't have any interest in reading it I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fine but I have other books on Scotland that I feel like are going to be better or I've read and are ones that I think are better than this so I'm just gonna you know pack this one up Next is a surprising one and it is The Dead Father's Club by Matt Haig. I have loved everything I've read from Matt Haig and this is the last one that I had. But this is written in a conscious stream of thought with no speech marks or anything like that. And it is a Hamlet retelling and I don't care for Hamlet. So yeah, I, I just I just couldn't. I couldn't with this one like this is from a kid's point of view and it's just a stream of consciousness and I just don't get along with that writing style at all. Same thing with this one this is The Pool of the Stars by Emma Donahue. This is about um, nurses in Ireland in World War One and again it's a stream of consciousness like I got on the bus and I sat down and I waited as the bus trundled through the streets dodging all the holes in the road and there was a man across from me who had a cough and like it was just again no I don't think there's there's no speech marks on this either so I didn't know when somebody was talking or when she was describing something and I just I couldn't it just didn't gel with me with the writing style I've learned that stream of consciousness consciousness is just not for me and the last one on the try chapter was the dating game by Sandy Barker I just couldn't get into this me and Tori both bought this and neither of us could get into this I just I don't know what it is about the right style, about the characters, I just did not care. It's like the Wish version of The Bachelor and it's called The Stag and I just, I don't like The Bachelor. So why, why did I think this was a good idea to buy? It's just not for me. Okay, so on to the books that I have read and I'm now unhauling. I have a rule about my library that if I read a book and I do not think I will reread it, I will unhaul it. And, you know, I've still got just over 800 books in my collection so that's a lot of books that I do want to reread. I don't need to be keeping the ones that I won't reread. And the first one is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. By no means was this a bad book. Look at this beautiful version. You can see the fade in on the top from how long I've had it. Um, by no stretch of the imagination was this a bad book but it was just fine. Um, It's a beautiful beautiful edition it's actually embossed I don't know if you can see that the titles embossed onto the cover and well not the title for it says not everyone has to be the chosen one so this is about the other people so there's like the chosen ones and the war that goes on with the chosen ones and the bad guy and this is about the other people that just happened to live in the town when this all went down and it was an interesting take and it was it was it was really really interesting but again I just didn't I, I just I wouldn't reread it. It did what it set out to do and that's fine. And now someone else gets to appreciate this beautiful copy. Next is The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. This is a fun camp rom com -y type urban fantasy set in this town where the sort of family that founded it have to come and charge the ley lines every so many years and our main character has cursed her ex with a Bath and Body Works candle thinking it was just a joke but because she's a witch it wasn't a joke she actually cursed him and when he comes back to do the ley lines things go awry and they have to fix it. This book is one that I say it's here for a fun time not for a long time. I enjoyed it ish while I was reading it. was like a three star middle of the road book. It was fine. It wasn't the best written but it, again it did what it said it was going to do. I'm not mad at it. I just don't have any plans to reread it. Next is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. Again, these beautiful, beautiful spread edges. And this is about a black babysitter who is looking after a white child and she's accused in public of kidnapping the child and a whole big hoo-ha happens from there. And the mum of this toddler is a influencer and so she starts to use her influencer-ness 
to condemn the behaviour and show how good an ally she is to the black community and yada 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 and it's very white saviour and it's meant to be, it's meant to show how that's not, just not what you want to do. But at the end of the day, for me, the well, the story was really good. The characters were forgettable and I have no, again, no inclination to pick this back up again. So, if I want to, I do have the audiobook. And next is Fake It Till You Bake It by Jerry Wesley. This is a, again, contemporary romance about these two. He owns a cupcake shop and she gets in trouble after turning down a reality, like The Bachelor proposal on TV and ends up working with her. But he also plays, what does he play? I've forgotten. This is, I forget everything. But yeah, um, she's like an influencer. He's a sports player who owns a cupcake shop. And when they're spotted together, someone thinks that they're dating. And so his cupcake shop gets really popular. So he's like, let's fake date. This had all the buzzwords for me and I love the characters and I love the concept, but the story just fell a little bit flat for me. So I don't plan on rereading this. It, again, I really did enjoy it and I enjoyed the characters. I just didn't get enough of what it said it was going to do. Next up is one of the weirder books that I've read and that is The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. Hardinge? I don't know how to pronounce her name, but this is a... I don't know if it comes under fantasy or magical realism. So this is about a family who get moved to this island and her dad is a not a priest, not a vicar, what are they called? He he, he, he looks after like a church, but like he can get married. And I can't, minister, he's a minister. Who at the time was also a man of science, so like this is way, way back before technology and stuff. I can't even remember when. And they go to this island and her dad has been disgraced in the scientific world, but she doesn't know why. Like this is from a child's perspective or like a younger, young adult, like teenage, lower teenage age style thing. And weird things start happening. And then she finds this tree that when you feed it lies, it does weird things and it produces this weird fruit. And honestly, I, I struggle to keep up with this book. It is beautiful. And I, I think from learning more about this author's books, one of the least weird ones, but it's just, it is so far beyond my level of intelligence. This needs someone, this is like a peer book. This is like low level peer book. It needs somebody whose brain can work through the gymnastics and this girl's in it. Next is The Island by Victoria Hislop. This one again, I DNF'd a fair bit through. This is again set in Greece and it is about the leper colony island that they had in Greece and it does exist, it's a real place. Um, people with leprosy were sent there to die um, but instead they lived and they created this community and our main character finds out that her grandmother was on the leper colony and that's all I really got. It's like there's a story of the main character and her relationship with her boyfriend who's a bit of a dick and realising that she shouldn't be with him and then there's the story about her grandmother and then it switches between timelines and again it's got all the buzzwords for me like it's split time timelines it's about family and they're in the same place it's just the writing style Victoria Hislop's writing just does not work for me at all um, but my neighbour recommended this and said that it's a fantastic read so if you like Victoria Hislop's writing, this might be for you. Next again, we've got another Veronica Roth and this is The Chosen Ones. This is about the aftermath of being The Chosen Ones. So there's this group that were like The Chosen Ones and they had all the powers and abilities and blah, blah, blah. And they fought the big bad and they got rid of the big bad and now they all have a lot of mental health issues. And this is on the anniversary. I don't know what anniversary, I can't remember. And they are like unveiling this thing about like it has all the names of the people that died in this war with the the, the big bad um and they're toting out the the heroes again but the heroes don't want to be toted out and it's about these heroes and what they went through and what they're going through now and how an event like that changes you and how it affects you and how you know it even says on the back that they're struggling 
with PTSD. So like, it sounds like a really good read, but I just, I just didn't care about the characters. I just didn't, I just didn't care. Next up are the first two books in a, I think it's going to be a longer series, and that is Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is, again, beautiful Spread Edge editions, and this is based on African mythology, I can't remember exactly where because it doesn't really tell you much on the back. Um, but this is about a sort of fantasy world that is set off of African, some African folklore and I can't remember again which one. And there are these people who have magic and they all have white hair. And years ago they were all like killed. And this king now has this, like, he has his vendetta against them and his daughter doesn't have that sort of same vendetta or he's, yeah, his daughter. But they basically, they go on an adventure to save magic. That is, that is basically the premise of this book. Something is going down, the gods are in trouble and they go on a quest to save magic while this king is also going on a quest to destroy magic and to destroy the gods. And I'm sure if you're a fancy reader, this is great, but there were so many names, so many places, so many gods, so much lore that I could not wrap my head around. I am too dumb for fantasy. Like, I am too dumb for fantasy. If it's urban fantasy, fine. Like, I can deal with urban fantasy. Like, Percy Jackson. I kind of know a bit about New York. I know about Greek mythology because I was taught it in school. The Cassie Clare books. I, again, I know a bit about New York. Like, I know roughly how things look. I just don't know how to get into a new fantasy world. All the fantasy you'll find on my shelves are either, either urban fantasy or they don't delve into world building. And this is very, very deep on the world building. And for some people, that's incredible. For me, I can't. I can't get my head around it. I'm too dumb for this kind of fantasy. <laughs> I'm not a fantasy girly. And it's a shame because I really liked the characters in this. I loved learning about the folklore and the gods and these excellent myths and legends. But I just, like, I didn't care about the king. I didn't care about the prince. I didn't care about the love story. I just, it was just, just not for me. Next is Kindred by Octavia Butler. This is a, again, kind of like sci-fi or um, magical realism. I don't know where to put this. This is another one of those books where I am not smart enough for this book. This follows our main character who gets pulled back in time when this boy, who turns out to be one of our ancestors, is dying. And she gets pulled back to rescue him. And she keeps getting pulled back any time his life is in danger. Unfortunately, he lives way back when um, black people were enslaved in America. And yeah, our main character is black. And it's this book is so horrendous, but not, like, not in that it's a bad book. In that the things that were being done to human beings based on things that were done to human beings in the past and still some places currently was so vastly described that I felt like I wanted to look away but I couldn't because it's a book like do you know what I mean it's like it's like how some people feel about that bit in Outlander when Black Jack's got Jamie and it's just you want to look away but you can't because you're reading it um and it was so brutal and so... I love a good brutal thing, but, like, there's a limit. I have a limit, and this surpassed my limit of what I am able to, like, mentally deal with. I also did not know this was written in the 70s, <laughs> which would have been good information to have going in, because the language that was used in this just rubbed me up the wrong way, and I get that it's relevant to the time. I get it. I really do. I understand it. And Octavia Butler is fantastic as a writer, but 
this is a great book. I'm glad I've read it. I don't need to reread it. Next up is one that just made me mad, and that is Long Game by Elaine Armas. I read, read this in one of my vlog vlogs previously. This is about a football player or soccer player, because it's in America, and a woman who works for a soccer management team, and she gets herself in trouble and gets sent to help out with his team where he is coaching, and he's in hiding because he's famous and he doesn't want people to know who he is, blah, blah, blah. And they have this lacklustre romance while dealing with these half-assed written kids. And I cannot, I cannot fathom, I cannot wrap my head around the fact that this book was written by the same person that wrote one of my favourite books of the year. I can't, I can't get my head around it because I really just did not like this book. Like I say, I rage read it. The best thing about this book were the cats or the cat and the chicken. And I think that says it all. I really hope other people like this, but it's just, it's just not for me. It was just so, like, there's no, there's no build up to the romance. And then he's talking about his genitals at breakfast. Like, you need to just, just no. No. And lastly is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. This is a book that I've been scared to read for the longest time because this got rave reviews and then the second one tanked. And so I didn't know whether I want to even bother reading this because I don't want to read the second one and get that feeling of disappointment that everybody seems to be getting. Um, especially if I loved this and really, really wanted to devour the next one. So I decided to pull the trigger and just read it. And I did, I really, really enjoyed this. This is about Brie, is it Brie? Brie, who has this gift to be able to revive plants. So she can grow a plant from like a petal or a leaf or a seed, or obviously like, but like rapidly, like puts the seed in the ground, focuses her magic, poof, like big plant. And her mums own a flower shop and then, but she's adopted. And then this lawyer turns up and is like, oh, you've, your aunt died and she left you her estate. So they go to this estate and find this crumbling estate with these massive gardens. And like, they're kind of like organising the house, trying to learn more about her family. And then she finds this poison garden and she's the only one that can go in there because the poisons, like all the poison plants are just deadly. And there is a secret plant in the poison garden that's been protected by all the poisons. And there's hijinks and there's... This is definitely a YA. Definitely, like, on the younger side of YA, I would say. And I really, really enjoyed this. It is, again, Greek retelling, but with a goddess that I'm less familiar with. And this was... I, I really, really enjoyed this. I, did, I didn't I did love it. It wasn't, like, five-star best book of the year, like, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um... Unfortunately, I did look up, like, spoiler rundown of the next book and I'm not interested in reading it. I'm not going to put myself through that um, to then be disappointed because nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens in the first, in the second book. They they talk about what they're going to do and then in the last few pages do it, according to all the reviews and stuff. So I'm not going to bother. Like, I know how it ends. It's fine. It's all good. And it's very formulaic of, like, a YA fantasy. So I'm fine. It's fine. I really enjoyed this, I really enjoyed the characters, but again, I'm just not going to reread it. So, someone else can get the joy that is this book. I have to say though, the characters in this, Tom Notch. So that is my rambly unhaul. I hope all of this kind of made sense. Um, Like I say, I am like having like hot flushes and stuff um, because of this like switchover and I'm not feeling my greatest, but I wanted to get a video up for you tomorrow for me today for you so yeah I hope you enjoyed it like I say if you want any of these books just get in contact with me and I will send them to you for postage um any of my friends if you guys want them you know you've got first dibs I'll probably send a photo in the group chat but yeah thanks very much for watching um if you got this far and you want to leave me an emoji leave me a specifically a green heart for this poison heart a green heart or a plant emoji of some kind uh, just let me know you're here even if you don't want to leave a comment 
Um, thank you very much and I will see you in my next video where hopefully I don't feel like a giant pile of garbage.